Hi all. Today I'm going to discuss with you the difference between simple return and log return, and uh, why in finance uh, we generally use log returns. So let's see the difference, and then we'll see it on on the Jupyter notebook as well. So let's say you have uh, 100 rupees, and uh, that 100 rupees became 200 rupees after one year, and the next year it again came back to 100 rupees. So obviously we started with 100 rupees, we are back to 100 rupees. That means we made no profit, no loss. Now there are two ways to calculate returns. The first one is simple return, in which we basically do 200 minus 100 divided by 100. So basically, the current price minus the previous price divided by the previous price, and as we can see, the price moved from 100 to 200. So that's 100 percent return. And next year, since it became from 200 to 100, the formula would be 100 minus 200 divided by 200. So this time it's minus 50 percent. And if we try to add both of them. We get fifty percent returns. Now, obviously, uh, this is wrong. So this is wrong because we have not made fifty percent returns. We have actually made zero percent returns because our price, our stock went from hundred and it's back to hundred. But this is where log returns are so important. As you can see, I have now shown you log returns as well. So the formula of log return is L N, and then uh, bracket the current price divided by the previous price. So if you do this, you get sixty nine point three percent here. And for 100 to 200, it shows as minus 69 percent. If we add that, it becomes zero. That means log returns can be added very easily, which is very useful property. So with that in mind, let's start. Welcome to my channel. Um, and again, we are going to talk about log returns, and I'll also show you something about normal distribution. So obviously, we'll need to import some libraries. Let me just make it a little bigger. so i'll be needing date time i'll be needing pandas i'll be needing numpy um i'll use pylab also let's see and then let me add seaborn seaborn is a plotting library um Let me add SciPy stats. Um, I'll also import Plotly in case I need it. And let me import Matplotlib. That's the final library that I'm going to take. Great. So let's see. Um, the first thing that we want to do is let's get the data. So I already have. Uploaded the NSE stock data in a CSV format. So let me just read that. Let me check out if this is correct. I'll have to interpolate it. and let's read it out so this is the data that we have um since 2017 we have the ticker the ohlc and we'll be doing all our all our calculations here so first thing we want to do is let's see how to calculate the simple returns and as i just showed you the formula it's we can use the formula also or we can directly use the inbuilt formula So let me first show you the direct formula, which is DF or close. If we want to do it on close price, then percentage change, and let's drop the NAs because the first one will become an NA, and let's try to print it out. So these are all the simple returns. So this is the simple return, and uh, before I go ahead and show you the, let's also get the closing prices. let's also get the closing prices so prices is equal to df close so actually we'll do all the all the calculation here it will be easier so i've just got the prices here let me do all the calculations here again so i'll again calculate the returns so returns is equal to this this is the simple returns prices dot percentage change and let's print out the returns So this is the 
the returns. This is the simple return that we just printed out. And if we try to plot them, let's see how it looks like. So this is the graph of the returns and uh, looks straightforward. Let's, we can also do this using the formula which I showed you on the Excel. So again, I'm going to plot returns to this time. So let's call it returns to, which is equal to now I'm using the formula, which is prices minus prices dot shift. So sh what shift does is it moves your, uh, col uh, your column, your row by one in this case, because we have put one here and let's see what returns to looks like and you will notice if you see here 0 0.12 0 0.097 0 0.8949 this is the same thing so this is essentially just getting the simple returns using the formula and you can use one, either one of them it will give you the same plot so even if i try to show you the plot the plot will look exactly the same so you can see here the plots are exactly the same because the returns are exactly the same. So this is the way of getting the simple returns. But now we'll be talking about how to calculate the log returns. And as I said, they are better because they have additive addition property. So log returns is equal to nt.log we are using the numpy and basically the formula that we had just shown you prices divided by prices dot shift one so this is the same um formula which we, sh we which we which i sh uh, showed you on the excel and let's see how the returns look like now you'll start noticing some differences if you see here this is one two zero nine seven one and eight nine four nine and this is definitely different. So now you can start seeing that the simple returns is not equal to log returns, but I can also calculate uh, log returns by using a formula, another formula. So this is the formula two. So log returns two is equal to what we can do is np.log. And what I can do is one plus returns. And let's try it out. If this gives me the same result, And essentially you can see that this and this is exactly the same. So there, there are two formulas of getting the log returns. Let's also print it out. Let's also print it out. Log returns to dot plot. And now you'll notice that this return is not the same as this, even though it might look same because the results are very close. But if you, if you see it very carefully, you'll notice that this return is a slightly different from our simple returns. Um, now what I'm going to show you is we said that log returns can be additive, right? So let's see the additive property. So sum underscore returns is equal to np dot log of one plus returns. This is essentially our log returns. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come sum it. So I'm just summing it up cumulatively and let's print it out. So this is how I have added them. But what I'm going to do is let me try to plot it so that you understand what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to plot this now dot apply np dot exponential dot plot. Once we do that, you can see a graph like this. Now you must have seen this graph earlier I'm, and I'm sure you're wondering why is this looking very much like a um, nifty closing price graph because that's what we said. The log prices are additive, log returns are additive. So let me show you that. Now I'm going to plot the closing prices and let me plot the closing price and this is the closing price. So you can see that the log returns when when we added them and plotted it, they're showing exactly the same result as your closing price. So that proves that log returns are additive. Um, now let's also do one more thing. Um, I said that we can, we can um, get, let's say the price of the, let's try to get the last price, getting the last price 
using the formula. Um, so what we have to do is df dot close multiplied by np dot prod. Uh, okay, then one plus. Okay, so this is actually not that simple, uh, but let me try to see if this is correct. Right, so using this, we can get the last price also. We can also get the last price um, from the simple returns. Um, great. So let me also try to show you the difference, difference uh, between the simple and log return. Even though we have seen it once, let's, let's do it once more. So I'm printing df dot close. And returns dot mean length of simple returns. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get the average and multiply it. Um, and similarly, let's let me try to get the log returns also in a similar fashion. And you will see that I think I've made some mistake should have been exactly the same. I think the reason the reason is because we haven't removed the log the NA. We haven't removed the NAN. Let, let me just try to remove that first from here. I think that should fix it. Okay, so probably doing some slight mistake here because the answer should have come as 18117. Let me see. Let me try to do with log returns too. Anyway, so maybe it brings a slight mistake here. The answer should have come the same. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's try to just plot the the cumulative curve now, or or let's try to show you the normal distribution. So I'm showing you the normal distribution now. So log underscore returns dot plot, and I'm using the histogram. And you can see that this is the histogram. Let me make it a little better for you to understand. So I'm just going to update the layout to auto size equal to false, width is equal to 500, and height equal to 300. Let's see. Okay, so I think this is not, it's deprecated maybe probably. So if we, basically what we want to see here is that the average, the mean is at the zero. The mean is at the zero. And that's the most important part here because you'll notice that when we use log returns, the mean is always at the zero and it can go till minus infinity to plus infinity. So I hope you've understood how mean returns and log returns are different. And generally, we use log returns because uh, it gives us uh, the better results. So I have added these two lines here. Once I've added this, and if I run the histogram again, you will find that the histogram gives a better result. So once I run it, you can now clearly see that histogram, the mean value is zero, and it's going till minus infinity to plus infinity. Also, let's see why this was not coming correctly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to log returns and I'm going to drop NA. So we uh, we said that the first row is NA. So let's drop that. So I'm going to drop the NA first. Let's run this log returns. Now we have 
1477 rows and let's go back to our formula the closing price because now once we run it i'm sure this will become 18117 so once we run it now you can see that our log return is is getting the same result as as a closing price so since log returns is is the correct additive sum we can we are able to find the right price but if if you do simple returns it will always have a positive bias and that is why you can see that the value of nifty is is getting inflated is not the correct value of nifty so i hope you like the video we saw how mean uh, mean returns is different from log returns and how log returns are additive and can be used um if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you